Hello everybody and welcome to a practical video here at Birch Hill. I can't remember whether I mentioned last time but the point that is currently under this one got damaged and so needs replacing. So I thought what better opportunity to show you how to do stuff than to take a video of replacing the point and seeing what we do. So here we have a point with a damaged tie bar, missing bit off the side, though admittedly once all the wiring and everything is done we will be cutting those off so that's actually not an issue, but the damage to the tie bar is an issue. Now I've already had this point up once, so it's not actually glued down, the track around it is loose, in fact most of the points in the track have been pulled up and down and are not glued down so we'll need re-gluing. But, for the time being, there are a couple of points where they're just held down with screws. And that is because of the type of track we are using. If we were using Pico Flexi Track, you would be able to get your pliers, grab the fish plates and just slide them out the way it takes a bit of effort but it can be done however on this track it can't so we need to lift it and unhook the fish plates to be able to move the point without causing too much damage to the surrounding area as you can see we have pulled up a bit of ballast here we would obviously be trying to avoid that usually and that is where the Pico stuff is good being able to have the fish plates slid along and just lift straight out without lifting the rest of the track. It does of course mean you can then take the new point and drop it straight down in and slide the fish plates over. So if I turn this around of course we have the wires already soldered to this. Being initial frog as you can see from the replacement it's quite a large frog. There is four wires soldered so that the frog is permanently wired because we really do want to make sure everything possible is done to make sure we get good connectivity on the power and so far we have had fantastic connectivity on the power so that is working. So the first thing I'm going to do is to quite simply remove the wires that are already soldered on. And obviously this one does not want to move, that's okay. We have ways of making them come off. Let's just try and get into it from this side first though. Obviously you want to be careful when doing stuff like this to not melt the sleepers. Not too much of an issue with a point that is coming out and being got rid of. Because it's already damaged. But usually we want to try and avoid damage in the points. Don't do what I did and put a drill through it. They don't like that. Once again, I make these mistakes, so you don't have to. And there we go, all four droppers are removed. We'll clean up the, bra the iron. We can lift this up and we can have a look and see here, the tie bar had been completely destroyed. I made some temporary fixes so that the layout was still usable whilst we waited. For a new point to arrive but if we look in here you can see the gap here in the middle of the tie bar where it's split in half it is split down this side as well and you can see that this is riding way too high in the middle and even has some little bits of wire sticking up from it 
not ideal but it did the trick at least on a temporary basis. You can also see from underneath some of the modifications that were made to the point when it went down. So here we have wires, uh, wires going across which permanently link the blades in the, the switching blades in the middle and the center rails to the outer rails meaning they are permanently powered by cables not rely and they're not relying on the rails touching over here to get electrical power to them which was obviously it works if you get any dirt in the side there that will stop working so it is always a good modification to make So of course then we have the new point. This is exactly the same type of point as this one. And I think seeing them side by side like this really shows why it's important to paint and weather your track. <laughs> because the painted and weathered one really does look so much better. But of course before we put this down we're going to have to add these wires in here and if we look around the back you can see we don't actually have space for the droppers on the new one so we'll have to cut that out as well so we'll just start just by taking the knife and gently pushing it down To remove the sections in between. If that doesn't quite come out of the way, you just grab it, twist, and it's done. So we just need to repeat that without getting stuck. across all four sections here and then across here where we want to add the droppers well, there is some more work we need to do to these points because the hole in the tie bar here actually isn't big enough for the rods that come up from the point motors. So we are going to carefully drill out that hole to be slightly bigger as well. As I say, the first thing we want to do is make sure this is nice and clear. And we've got plenty of access to the rails because we really don't want to be trying to solder onto a bit of plastic. That's not going to work very well and it's going to cause some nasty plastic fumes. So again, we need to do that along here, where we are soldering our droppers. because we are soldering to the bottom of the rail, which means the droppers are completely hidden from view once the rail is down and ballasted. Just improving the look of the layout that little bit extra. You can of course solder to the sides of the rail as you would have seen 
in my live stream with Black Falcon models not long ago. That is how they were done on his layout with the track laid first. But of course there is no right or wrong way of doing this, there are just many different methods. And what we have here is an opportunity to show you a different one. So there we have all our appropriate bits from the sleepers removed. I will change over the drill to get us the drill bit we need to make sure we can fit over the rod from the point. And just gently drop that through. So we now have a much bigger hole there, as you can see. That obviously does weaken it and could have contributed to the quite how much the point sh uh, shattered on the old one. But it was much more because of the drill that I put into it from below. Don't ever do that. I'm still making these mistakes so that you don't have to. So the next thing we need to do is to get some wire that we can put underneath just across these. Does not need to be very much wire at all. As you can see there we are only tiny tiny bits of wire. Now when working with bits of wire this size I find it much easier to strip one end off Dip it into the flux. Put some solder on. And then grip the end we've just soldered and pull the rest of the insulation off. We do not need any insulation on this. So that just means we've got a nice single long bit of wire, no insulation, so we can just tin the rest of it. And have our bit of wire ready. We shall then tin the bottom of the point. and put some solder in place on there. Now obviously this does leave, as you can see from here, the bit of wire showing between the rails. Obviously on a modern image layout that could be disguised as cable trunking but honestly do you really notice it on these ones once they're down and it's painted yes you can see it if you're looking for it but does it show up normally not really so we take our bit of wire again with the pliers or we will end up burning ourselves drop down onto each side like that and 
so just like that we have a permanent wire between those bits of track so then we need to do the same thing for the other side We measure up our small bit of wire, which is just the right size. Strip the end. Some solder, give it a second to cool down. And strip the rest of the insulation. Before doing the same again. We tin the rails next, preferably without sitting on top of the wire for the soldering iron. Take our bit of wire and drop it in place. have both sections now permanently connected. So the next thing we need to do with this now is to tin up across here and get it in with the droppers on. We can then put it into place, get the point motor rod lined up with the hole in the tie bar, get it down and we're done. So we are very close now to having our point fully replaced and fully working. So it's just flux on all four joints here. Get some solder on them. So you can see this is now all tinned up and ready it's going to sit this way so we're just going to flip that over and get the right droppers soldered onto each bit of rail
Oh, this one's got a bit sticking backwards here. There we go. That was just making it a bit too long to fit into the gap. And there we have all four droppers attached. We can then pull the droppers back through the board from below. Get our fish plates lined up and attached. We want to then get our fish plates at this end. Also lined up and attached. Now, of course, the hardest part here is going to be making sure we get lined up with the rod from the point motor. But there we have got it. We've got a couple of the droppers that need pulling through a bit more. So it's sitting too high whilst we sort them out. them now down we can adjust the position of that get that down and get our temporary screw back in place ready to test if I flick the point motor the point does indeed flick nicely so obviously the next thing to do, I'll stick the track down. I will be using watered down PVA and just putting it through between. I will be doing this to all the points on the layout, so I'm not doing it right now. And then to paint and weather the, tr the new point to match the existing. And then we can finish getting the control panel wired. Once that is done, we can get the points ballasted. But that is all for now, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for watching. I will see you next time. Please do remember to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell and share with your friends, family, 176 scale people you have lying around. Even your enemies. Get them all in. Get them all watching. You're all welcome here. Bye for now.